No Excuses by Brian Tracy. This book is about self-discipline. And I like to look at the concept of self-discipline as not necessarily a forceful thing you have to do. See, we live in a time today where we could use systems, tools, resources available to help us optimize what we do as far as our workday or as far as the progress we make as an entrepreneur to do the things that are the most important while eliminating, delegating, automating, and outsourcing everything else so that we can get most of, of our time, our energy, our opportunity costs, and the highest leverage out of our resources. See, that's what I like to think of when I think of self-discipline. I look at it as a puzzle that can continuously be solved and evolved to higher levels. I don't see it as hard and work that is stressful. In the beginning, as you start out in your journey, it might seem that way. But understand that there's far more education, there's far more people that you can connect with and learn from that have had the same problems that you've had when it comes to time management or any kind of thing that involves discipline that is designed to move you towards your objective. See, you've got your vision, you've got your goal that you want to achieve, and there's certain things that you need to focus on. And there's certain things that if you put attention and awareness on them and you start to go down the direction of those things, it can lead to distraction, move you away from your goal. So self-discipline is doing the thing you know you have to do to produce the results. And to add to that, to realize that there's support systems and tools and resources available today, automation, various different kinds of things, especially if you run a business on the internet or your business involves the internet in some shape or form, it most likely does to make your life easier so you don't have to rely on willpower when it comes to self-discipline. So I pulled four concepts from the book that I want to discuss that I believe will be valuable for you. Number one is time management. Peter Drucker said, you cannot manage time. You can only manage yourself. You cannot manage time. You can only manage yourself. Time management is really life management, personal management, management of yourself, rather than of time or circumstances. See, you have your time, you have your energy, the amount of energy you have, you have 24 hours in a day, you've got energy to dedicate towards doing the things that produce the results. You have opportunity cost. You can either be doing this or doing something else, something that's valuable and produces results or something that will procrastinate you or delay your results or actually hinder your progress, move you backwards. Opportunity cost, you can do one thing at a time and one thing is better than another thing. Do you pick the thing that's the best, highest and best use of your time, highest and best use of your energy, highest and best use of your opportunity cost? And then you've got your resources, resources that exist in your business, resources that exist in your career, and this could be human resources, assets, certain kinds of intellectual capital, and so forth. All of these things you work with to leverage each hour you have every day. I used to think that it was more about volume as far as time you put in and that those that put in a lot of time will do the best. And while this is true, if they're optimally using their time, but even that stated, there's far more ways to optimize your time nowadays than ever before because we have breakthroughs in technology and software and certain kinds of processes that have been identified to be able to really leverage what we're doing to a higher degree. A lot of things that we're doing might look like they're still tasks that need to be completed by a human, but a lot of times they can be automated by computer software or processes. And as a result of that, we free up more time. And what you'll find is that if you work consciously and you're aware that you can do these things and you can learn how to do these things, then you can create far more output. Maybe you only work like five or six hours a day and you can create far more output than someone who works 10 or 15 hours a day. Okay, far more profits, far more progressive movement towards your realization of your goal. That all starts with managing yourself. It's the way you look at reality. It's all within you. Because how you believe reality to work is how you're going to deal with your time, energy, opportunity costs, and your resources. If you don't believe that this is possible, then you're probably not going to look for the solutions proactively. You're probably not going to take the responsibility you're probably not going to evolve very rapidly in your utilization of the time you have. And we all get 24 hours in a day. If you change your perspective and you adopt what I'm saying, and you realize that there's 
this is not something I'm saying that's breakthrough and totally new, and there's others that are getting better and better and using this, then you can evolve what you're doing by evolving yourself within, changing your perspective on how you look at time. And as a result of it, you'll start to do things differently and you'll find that you'll create more output and you'll better manage your time. You'll better be able to not manage the time, as Peter Drucker says. It's going to appear that you manage time better, but it's really a net result of you managing yourself. Time management is the ability to choose the sequence of events. By exerting your self-discipline with regards to time, you can choose what to do first, second, and not at all. You are always free to choose. You are always free to choose. You have the ability to determine what is the highest and best use of your time. What's the most valuable use of your time? If you're an entrepreneur, it's marketing and innovation and like to group sales under marketing. Why? because that's what drives the business forward. Now, if you're working as part of an entrepreneurial team or you have a business partner, then maybe you take care of the operations and your business partner takes care of the marketing and the selling and the innovation. Or uh, if you've got a, a group of advisors, it's segmented accordingly. But the bottom line is this, is that in any business, marketing and innovation, as Peter Drucker said, need to be set as the highest priority if you want the business to grow. You have to innovate to get more clients to buy what you have to offer because if you don't have something of value then you're trying to force what you think is valuable into the marketplace you have to learn to innovate based on what the market is looking for needs that exist in the marketplace and you can use marketing to stimulate the desire for your product or service you could even create something that the market hasn't even realized that it's going to be useful and you can use marketing to spread the message out there and help them realize that they work really well together you create the product based on value or the service based on value. That's the innovation. And you innovate to improve based on the other scope of options that are available. And you learn marketing, preferably direct response marketing, copywriting, and even consultative selling. We'll put that in there to broker deals, to do partnerships, to sell and get your product and service in the hands of the buyer in exchange for money. That's highest and best use. The essence of time management is for you to discipline yourself to set clear priorities and then stick to these priorities. You must consciously and deliberately select the most valuable and important thing that you could be doing at any given time and then discipline yourself to work solely on that task. Again, you have got your time 24 hours in a day and you've got a certain amount of time that you've dedicated towards your work. And within that, you can work with your energy, the opportunity cost and opportunity cost being picking this or that and picking the thing that's highest and best use of the opportunity cost and seeking counsel and mentorship from those that can help you recognize opportunity cost from a higher level of implementation. And what I mean by that is they can help you realize that there's something else that exists that's better use of your opportunity cost than what you think you're doing right now. And then you have your resources. Okay, You have got your staff, contractors, intellectual capital, assets, computer software, a lot of software available for free on the internet that's available that you can implement in your business. Working with somebody to help you recognize the utilization that these things exist and help you implement these things to free up your time can be really useful. It can be a worth, worthy investment of your time to seek out these resources that can help you leverage resources. So time, energy, opportunity, cost, and resources. If you set your priorities and you know that marketing and innovation is one of the important elements of driving the business forward and you reverse engineer everything you do in your business to make that happen then it's easier to set up what you're going to be doing with your opportunity cost it's easier to work with resources and to realize that you have a certain amount of energy every day that you can allocate and there are things you could do to improve the amount of energy that you have and you can take care of yourself and so forth but these are the dynamics that you have to work with when it comes to setting priorities and then sticking to the priorities. Okay, sticking to the priorities, not deviating away from it and doing things that masquerade as accomplishment, sticking to the priorities. That is effective use of your time. That's what's going to drive your business forward. That's going to move your career forward. Companies invest financial capital, but individuals invest human capital. Companies deploy financial assets, but your most vital assets are your mental, emotional, and physical energies. And how you invest them determines the quality of your life. So you get mental, emotional, and physical energies 
to dedicate towards the growth of your business or your career. And you get a certain amount of time every day that you can dedicate those energies to, to produce the results. Mental energies, okay, creative ways of solving problems, thinking of things in a certain way, acquiring knowledge and understanding so you can have a better way of looking at reality, thinking better and more effectively. Emotional, your ability to stay objective, to not get reactive and get pulled into a direction where you're emotionally drained. And physical, all these things tie together and leveraging and working with and optimizing your mental, emotional and physical energies is very important because then you can properly allocate those resources towards segments of time to produce the results. Now, it's important to be in environments and protect your mental and emotional and physical energies. Certain environments are draining. Ask yourself, the environment that you're working in right now, the setup that you have when it comes to your career and your business, is it draining you mentally, emotionally or physically? How could you change things around so it actually enhances your mental and emotional? Maybe you need to remove distractions. Maybe you need to consume certain information that's empowering versus paying attention and consuming disempowering information that gets you angry and emotional and wastes your emotional energy that causes you to mentally become confused. Maybe you feel overwhelmed by complexity. What are ways that you can have, you can put in place things you could do to help you manage complexity better? Are you paying attention to the information that's driving you forward? Or are you just consuming information based on shiny object syndrome? Thinking that the grass is always greener than the other side rather than valuing the opportunities that you have right now. All of these are important considerations to keep into con just as part of your daily process of optimizing your time. It should be a daily process. You work a day and then you evaluate the day and you figure out how you can optimize the day by realizing that you can optimize, you can automate the process, you can delegate it or you can eliminate it because a lot of things might look like they're worth your time. But after going through what I've discussed, you might realize that's a huge waste of the, your time. It's not actually moving things forward. Problem solving. Thoughts are causes and conditions are effects. Therefore, the quality of your thinking largely determines the quality of your life. The greatest mental principle is that you become what you think about most of the time. Okay, it's pulled from the strangest secret by Earl Nightingale. You become what you think about. If you think that a problem is going to set you back every time you get a problem, you get frustrated, then you're not going to make up a lot of uh, effective use of your time, or you're not going to be as effective with the use of your time because you're going to be frustrated, stressed out, maybe blaming others, procrastinating, and you'll drain yourself of mental, emotional and physical energies in the process. However, when you realize that as an entrepreneur, you are a problem solver, you're solving problems in the marketplace, and you're creating solutions, you're solving problems within your business, and that there are actually opportunities, when a problem occurs, you get excited about it, you get energized. And that energy allows you to focus on what you can do, you'll proactively go out and figure out ways, you'll tap into your subconscious abilities to solve the problem. And you'll be energized and excited when you solve the problem. And the bottom line is this, you will move the objective forward towards your vision. Top people in every field are intensively solution oriented. They think about solutions most of the time instead of getting bogged down in who did or didn't do something or other, the most successful people in every field concentrate on the solutions and what can be done to solve the problem. So become solution oriented. Okay, see problems as opportunities, train yourself, discipline yourself talking about self discipline here, to realize that when problems show up, you can create a solution. That solution can be really valuable for the marketplace can be valuable for your business growth. Get excited when there's a problem. If you have a team, make it a initiative to bring problems to the surface and reward those that bring problems to the surface. A good book to read is the E myth revisited by Michael Gerber. And when you understand the E-Myth Revisited, if you're an entrepreneur, everyone should read that book, then you realize it's not a people's problem, it's a systems problem. And what we do is we put systems in place to run our business. We identify the processes that exist and we put systems in place to resolve issues. We don't blame people or point fingers. You as the leader or the entrepreneur, when you see a problem, 
you find a solution and put a system in place to resolve it. If it happens again and again and again, and you don't take responsibility, you'll just continue blaming people. When the truth is this, is you haven't realized the importance of systems. You don't value it yet. And what you can do is you can learn to value systems. And then when you put a tool, a software, a process or a checklist in place, and there's clear communication and metrics and accountability in place, then those problems don't occur again. And you have less stress. And as a result, you have more mental, emotional and physical energies that you can reallocate to better utilize your time. It is only when you face unexpected reversals and setbacks that you show the world what you're truly made of. All of life is a test. The only question for you is do you pass or fail? So I believe you pass when you identify a problem and see it as an opportunity and put a system in place to resolve it. Whether it's a, a certain line of communication that you say to prevent it from happening again, a certain sequence of sentences that you say to add to clarity every time you make the communication, certain kinds of reminders or automated tools like Zapier or something set up, email reminders so that you can notify yourself of whatever it is, many different ways of solving a problem. And when you put these things in place, then you pass the test. So here's a nine step method for solving problems effectively. Number one, take the time to define the problem clearly. Remember, it's a systems problem, not a people's problem. Don't blame people as an entrepreneur. We put systems in place to resolve problems. People identify problems and we thank them and we encourage them to do so. Number two, you ask, is this really a problem? So if you're blaming people and you're blaming things outside of your control, then that's not really the problem. It's yourself. And you need to take a step back and realize that you have control of the dynamics. Number three, what ask what else is the problem? Because maybe you're just band-aiding something and that's just a symptom of a deeper cause. Perhaps you have to change something in your business model. Perhaps you have to change a process around entirely to be one that doesn't manifest all kinds of problems. Ask yourself, how did this problem occur? What was the cause of this? What are the possible solutions? Okay, so we're getting clear when we go through this process, when we have a problem and we're remaining objective and not wasting resources, emotional, mental, and physical resources and time. And we're getting to the solution quickly. What's the best solution at this time? Make a decision and assign responsibility. Okay, if you're going to say, well, here's the problem and here's the solution and that's it in a meeting and you haven't assigned any responsibility, don't assume that it's going to be resolved. You have to assign the responsibility and then assign accountability and ensure and follow through that it is complete when according to deadline. And make a discipline of doing this and it will remove even more friction and pressure and problems that will occur. And set a measure for the decision. Okay, what is the deliverable that needs to be achieved as a result of the problem and the solution being identified? Solution needs to go in place and perhaps a checklist needs to go in place. And perhaps some reporting needs to set up to prevent that from happening again. Some kind of weekly or monthly reporting where you go in and review like quality assurance. Self-discipline and work. A group of senior executives were asked, what are the most important qualities that a person would need to be promoted in your company? Of these executives, 85% agreed that the most important qualities are number one, the ability to set priorities and work on high value tasks. We talked about this time, energy, resources, opportunity cost. That's how you determine the highest and best use of your time and to set priority, okay, set it in priority sequence and work on one thing at a time till completion and set up your environment to facilitate that. That's how you make more progress. And then number two, the discipline to get the job done quickly and well, okay, quickly and well, efficiently and effectively quality. And this is something that you will get better and better at. And as determined and mentioned, we now have technology, software, tools available to help you get the job done, even in an automated fashion. If you're the kind of person that can set priorities, do the task, and then figure out how to streamline and automate it, you are extremely valuable for the company that you work for. Because you are driving the bottom line, okay? you're increasing profits. And as a result of that, you're cultivating a skill, a leadership skill, a skill of time management and a skill that's so valuable that you will not have a problem finding a job or creating a business because you operate from that perspective. So again, setting the priorities based on everything we talked about 
and getting the job done well and quickly with quality and figuring out how to either optimize it, automate it, delegate it, because it might not be highest and best of your time. What you can do is if you work for a company is you can do the task, complete it, turn it into a process and give it and outsource it at a lower price point. And as a result, you'll save money and you can move on to something else where you can do that again and again and again, creating more results for the company. And as a result, you move up. If you're an entrepreneur and you own a business or you work within a business in an entrepreneurial organization, that will be recognized and valued by those that have the ability to excel your career. Okay, that's what we're talking about when we say self discipline and work, set priorities, focus on the highest and best use and get the job done well and quickly and figure out how you can outsource, automate, delegate, or even eliminate. Okay, maybe you might realize that the very task you were given is not actually contributing anymore. And so that can be eliminated and perhaps replaced with something else. Apply some critical thinking and awareness and consciousness to everything you do. Don't just do things passively, because if you do so, you're going to miss out on the opportunity to evolve. The very last thing is happiness. Your ability to achieve your own happiness is the true measure of your success in life. Nothing is more important. Nothing can replace it. If you accomplish everything of material nature, but you are not happy, you have actually failed at fulfilling your potential as a human being. So everything we talk about here is exciting. Everything we talk about here is looking at what you do as far as self discipline from a different perspective. It is a more problem solving and puzzle, like a brain puzzle way of looking at reality that actually is exciting. And if you go about doing your business and your work from this perspective, you create more happiness within. You actually learn how to manage your time better and you create more output, which results in more free time. So you can dedicate that time towards doing other things that you enjoy doing. I used to think that the more you work, the more success you can create. And while that is true, it's really about the effectiveness of your time. And you can evolve so much using the things that we talk about, and we're just scratching the surface here. There's a lot more to this. You can evolve so much that you can create the same output that you would do in 10, 20, 30, 40 hours in just a handful of hours. You can create that level of income. You can create that level of output. And as a result of it, you will grow, you will contribute, you will feel fulfilled, and you'll be able to reallocate the other time to doing other things that you enjoy. In Brian Tracy's book, Maximum Achievement, he teaches the importance of the law of control, which states, you feel happy to the degree to which you feel you are in control of your life. You feel happy to the degree to which you feel you are not in control or controlled by other factors or people. Everything we talked about in this video and everything we talk about on this channel is designed to give you the control. And this information is designed to help you optimize your reality and realize that you drive everything by shifting perspectives around by consciously evaluating where your time, energy, opportunity, costs and resources are allocated. You make better decisions and realizing that there's no limit for this. You can get better and better at this. You feel you're in control and all of a sudden your work and your career and your business becomes more enjoyable because you're not reactive to this. You're more at the cause. You look at reality from an internal locus control. You believe you create reality. As stated, you become what you think about. When Napoleon Hill wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich, the book's title was perfect. You think and grow rich. You think and grow rich. So here's five ingredients of happiness. If you want to ensure that you have happiness and fulfillment, I know we're talking about self-discipline and self-discipline is applicable for all areas of your life. Here are the areas that we want to focus on to contain happiness and apply everything we've talked about. It's not just in business and entrepreneurship, health and energy, relationships, meaningful work, financial independence and self actualization. Okay, you can optimize your health and energy. You can put systems in place so that you could eat better and make better choices, attend the gym, not miss workouts. And as a result, you have more energy. You have better focus, mental clarity, which then applies to the work you do. Happy relationships, friendships, life partners, etc., contribute towards your success. If you do not resolve these areas in your life, then you're going to find that it's draining you of valuable resources, energy resources, emotional, mental, and physical energy. Meaningful work. I always believe in doing work and creating a business that benefits you, one that you can 
build a life around an enjoyable life because you profit well from it and that you serve others greatly serve humanity and number three you serve a higher purpose or evolution however you want to look at it if you got those three criterias under consideration you're doing meaningful work number four is financial independence finances are very important if you can afford to change your scenarios around hire people outsource delegate you have a lot of power you have the ability to learn a lot about yourself through the process of cultivating financial intelligence you can build a business that can create financial independence. You can accelerate yourself in your career and create more wealth, get paid more and invest that and have financial independence, which creates peace of mind. As a result, you'll feel happier. If you don't have financial independence, you'll feel stressed. You have control of it. And self-actualization, okay, very important. Becoming the best you can be, growing every day, using this information that we talk about in this video and everything else we talk about in this channel and making a commitment to yourself that you're going to integrate and implement everything you're learning. And you're going to revisit this video again and again and again to get even more information because we're being very concentrated here. 